Good morning. Uh, happy solstice. This is the day when the day is the longest of the year. The sun rises earliest and goes down latest. And here it's about, it rises 2.55 and goes down about 003. So basically it's three hours down, but it's not really, it doesn't go down below the horizon. So it's not really at all setting. So there's no sunset. But anyway, today is a very special day, especially for strange spiritual people. Uh, summer solstice is, is especially important because it's the day where the most amount of information is coming and um, able to download. So there are like packets of information that if you're in the right place at the right time in the right mindset, you're able to download information that you can then use for your own and for general uh, collective evolution and entertainment. So I didn't know this when I started out this journey. I knew there were solstice and I knew I wanted to be in Iceland during midsummer, but I didn't know the exact place until a couple of days ago. I had this strong urge that I need to go to the most northern space, the most northern city in, in, um, in Iceland. And it wasn't later until I started researching where I realized what this place actually is. And I will show you in a second. I won't tell you just yet. I'm just going to tease you because I'm, I'm still out about an hour, hour and a half. I wanted to drive all the way last night, but I was so tired. I started seeing fairies or, or goblins that I, I decided to stop here. And there's like a cool memorial spot here for, for somebody. Christian Einarsson Fra. Druplek. Somebody died in 94 and put this place here and there's a bench here. Uh, there was a lot of sheep here so they were they were uh, on my car last night. They woke me up a couple of times. So it was fun. A uh, cool place. Today is a beautiful day. It's a perfect day. Or every day is perfect but you know it's sunny, it's warm, uh, the wind doesn't blow that much. So it's going to be a great journey, about an hour and a half up, up all the way north. I'll show you more when I get there, but I'm really excited. It's about 6.30 now. I just woke up, had my morning routines, and I'm ready to head off. So that's it. Follow me on the journey up north for summer solstice. Boom. Oh yes, and I did want to mention that yesterday I drove 585.7 kilometers, and I was on the road for um, from about five o'clock until 12.30. Um, so that makes 17 and a half hours on the road altogether. I stopped for, you know, you saw what I did. I stopped for some stuff yesterday, but that was a long day. I'm really happy I made it so far. And now I got about 98 kilometers left to, I'll, show, I'll explain the place to you. It's in next to a place called Raufarhöfn. Raufarhöfn. You'll see later what it is. Raufarhöfn, 100 kilometers. Here we go. Greetings from Raufnarhöfn in the northern parts of Iceland, the most northern city or town in Iceland. Only a few hundred inhabitants. Now you might wonder, Christopher, why the hell are you here? Like, why did you drive so many extra kilometers for so many hours just to come up here to a sleepy, small, ancient fishing village? It's one of the first, um, uh, it, well, it used to be, let's say, it used to be a little bit more wild and crazy uh, because of the herring, but then the herring fishing stopped some years ago and it plummeted down now it's I think this is about as wild as it gets. As I said, I had this urge to come here and I'm not talking about like a mental thing like, oh, it would be nice to go to, to Raunarev. No, oh, that could be a cool place. I'm, I'm speaking about a, a urge that comes from a deeper place of I didn't even understand why. I just followed my intuition. I followed the feeling and yes, it looked cool and all. Yeah, and the nor most northern parts. I just had this feeling I need to be here. 
and I have a secret or I have the, the, the reason why I came here I'm gonna reveal it to you in just a second but I just want to say something about following your intuition and following your your inner dialogue or inner monologue sometimes it's a dialogue as you speak to yourself in various voices or maybe that's just me but having the courage and having the bravery to really listen to that uh, voice or that guidance is what I believe and feel and have seen in my life has taken me to the most amazing places and the most amazing uh, connections with other people. To be able to really trust that voice, to be able to trust that feeling, a lot of cleansing needs to take place because we are really conditioned by other people, uh, by dogma, by religion, by politics, by what is supposed to be right. So it's hard to distinguish between what is really us and what is all this conditioning. So spiritual, mental, physical, emotional clearing, cleansing is needed for many, many years to be able to get to that point where you can actually trust that voice. But you can start with small things and then, you know, the more guidance you get, like, oh, this turned out good, this turned out... And sometimes it's not even what turns out good in the moment. It's what turns out in the long run. And sometimes you don't even know, like, why did I do this? And it turns out later, two, two three, five, ten years later, that, ah, okay, now I understand. I'm, ha I'm seeing things happening in my life now that I did 20 years ago that I didn't have any idea why I did it back then. But I know now. I understand it now so life is a mystery and, and just you know allow it to develop and open I'm just listening to some really inspirational um, guidance and, and lectures on my way up here and, and I feel really connected and I'm in exactly the right place so where do you belong where is your where is your place in life I urge you to to try to find that in yourself and then let life kind of open up to you as a flower, as a lotus flower. Oh, I'm being so romantic here now. Ah. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the place. I'm gonna drive up the hill. Okay, I already, exp I already um, reveal a little bit. It's up on a hill. Um, some years ago, I spent summer solstice in um, Stonehenge in England, and it was one of the most profound experiences of my life. Um, I don't have any expectations what's going to happen. The solstice, the, the peak moment of solstice is about 40 minutes away from now. So I'm going to be up at that place where when it hits just before and a little bit after. But ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you the Arctic Henge. So here we are, finally at the Arctic Henge. While it's not as impressive as the Stonehenge, it is a good try. And they, it's, it's the mission of one guy, Erlingur B. Thoradsen, 1948 to 2015. He died a few years ago and rumor says that his boots are still somewhere here, his rubber boots. He was a passionate guy, wanted to bring tourism and wanted to bring attention back to this small town that lost most of its, uh, most of its money and most of its people when the herring industry collapsed some years ago. And he wanted to build this monument to get people back here. I'm actually surprised I'm the only one here because apparently this is a paganistic or pagan um, monument and it's aligned. These walls here or these arches here are aligned with the summer solstice sun. So it should have some kind of significance just like Stonehenge in England has but so far it's about 45 minutes until the actual peak moment I'm still the only one here let's see if anybody else comes here but I'm gonna take my spot in the middle and just sit down and reflect and meditate I actually have some mushroom chocolate with me that I was thinking of maybe to eat here but looking at this place now this is not the appropriate place um, I will save that for a later time you will be part of that journey I always carry my amethyst with me when I travel, it keeps me safe. And now I also picked up a lava stone because there's a bunch of lava stones here all around. This whole, this whole um, thing is built on a, on, a, on a lava stone kind of ground. So I wanted to take those both with me into the center and uh, just have there to kind of charge and then carry those with me 
in the future as well or at least have the lava stone bring its energy to the amethyst because the amethyst is pretty much the only stone that i feel uh feel right carrying around one is good enough two i will start losing them so i will hang out here for an hour or so and then go to swim there's a there's a swimming pool here and then i'll head off to the next hot pool a couple of hours down so wherever you are even if you hear this afterwards happy solstice may it be fruitful and awesome for you too as well bring in some new energy uh, bring in some new insight bring in some new clarity for the coming year this is in one way the start of the new year or the end of the previous one because it's going downhill after that so we're still 50 45 minutes into growing of the year and then it's about dying again but hey that's life that's how nature works now the photos are taken everything is good i'm ready to go in one thing though i'm not bringing any technology inside i was walking straight into the middle when i came i had all my gear with me and i was just full i was just stopped on the perimeter so no technology inside so when you come here leave your stuff leave your bags leave your instagram leave your everything there's a time and place for that but it's not inside here okay you got it let's go so now it's a little bit past summer solstice a few minutes past i had my alarm clock on the outside of the perimeter waking me up at four minutes past the culmination and I was sitting there thinking like what is what is my what is what is why am I here what is my lesson what is the big reveal that I was expecting to get or hoping to get and suddenly in my quietness and solitude and my you know very special I um, kept the space free I started hearing voices and they were not in my head they were outside, outside my head and they were in Spanish and I don't really speak Spanish, but I could, you know, after a while I realized and recognized it was Spanish. And for a second there, I was really annoyed. I was like, oh, Spanish tourists come here and they don't respect, you know, the, the sacredness. They come and take photos. And I, I even put my hoodie on and I was like, just look, I'm not going to, I'm not going to even notice they're there until I realized, no, they're here for a reason. And I have a connection with, not with Spain, but with uh, Panama. Uh, and so one, one level is that I, I realized I need to start to speak Spanish. I need to start to, to train myself in Spanish. And, uh, but the deeper level, that was, that was like on a superficial level. And I thought, okay, this is it, yeah, yeah, fine. But no, there was, there was a level more. And this was just about around the, the summer solstice, when, when the peak moment when I got this. My initial reaction to sorting out things in life is to is to um, isolate myself. I just want to have this experience of of me, you know, my sacred journey, and everything around me is a distraction. And this is where I've been for for some time. And I've I've felt like I want to have a breakthrough. And I was asking myself, Seven Bomar, the, the stuff that I listened to yesterday was all all the time saying like, have a breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. And I was like, there there's got to be something more to break through. What is my breakthrough? And I didn't want to give up. My mind was already going off into other stuff, and I wanted to to go and check what the time it was. But I was like, no, no, no. I'm gonna stay here. I'm gonna break through. I'm gonna see what's on the other side. And what's on the other side is that these people were sent here for a reason. Because they're gone now. And there's nobody else here. And they came just around the peak moment. And they came to teach me something. They came to reveal something to me in guidance, in synchronicity. And I'm just so grateful that they came because I realized on two different levels things that I, I could take into my life. So the major part, and I'm speaking this mostly to myself, if you're watching this and you're enjoying it, okay, but I'm, I'm doing this for me so I remember, remember who I am and what I am and what I want to do. And the main thing here is that there are no distractions in life. There are no distractions, it's just it's just part of the same play and we're all actors in that same play and these distracting Spanish tourists 
were actually part of my play. And I'm so grateful. So, gracias. They all really lived. I can't thank them anymore. But in my heart, they are loved. This is it. Now off to the hot pool. Yay. Hello from Husavik. Small, sleepy village. Well, not that small. It's a little bit bigger already. On the northern side, close to Akareri. Um, there's a place here called Ostakarid, which I'm going to now. It's on the other side of this road up there on the hill somewhere. But I also heard in addition to this one, which was on the map, that there's another one. There's a geothermal lake here. I don't know how hot it is, but as you've seen, I don't really care about the cold anyway. Like I don't care about, I do care for, but I don't care about whatever. I like the cold, I don't mind the cold. I like the hot, I don't mind the hot. I'm hot and cold, like cold and ice and hot and lava. That's right me. Okay, so enough talking, more walking. Bye bye. I was already halfway there until I remember I forgot my money. I'm gonna go get a thousand crowner, which is about ten ten dollars, something like that, to put in a box there somewhere. Especially when I forgot to do that earlier on. I'm gonna better myself and head on back and get the money and put it in a box. As should you if you go check out this place. Everybody look to the left. Everybody look to the right. Yes, we can go. Everybody look up. Everybody look down. Yes, 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 yes. Now we can go. Woohoo! Let's go again. Round two. No smoking, no camping, no motor homing. Bay 300. Close at 11. No dogs. <laughs> Shower. Rules, no smoking, hot pool, hot pool, and <laughs> cold pool. This is the first one I've seen so far that has a cold pool and a hot pool. So that's awesome. I'm super excited about this one. I'm gonna lay here for a long time. It's already raining, so that's even cooler. It's even nicer. So here they have a heated kind of dressing room, changing room. And uh, yeah, it's really, it's really warm, man. And here's a yellow box where you put your money. I put a little bit extra now because I didn't pay the previous ones. I'm sorry about that. We're square now, we're even. So who's a week? You pay a little bit to the other places, okay? That I forgot to pay. We're all good now. I'm gonna go enjoy. See you later. So I've been here at Ostakarid for the last hour or so. And I'm starting to feel a little bit uh, sluggish. Oh, well, fortunately, there is a cold tub. instant awakening and then back I could do this all day just outside of Husavik where I just went to the cheese hot tub whatever it was the best ever. It was so good. It was crazy. I feel so energized, ready to go. But just before leaving town, I heard that there is a geothermal lake here. And it's just there. I can see it from here. You can't see, but I can see it from here. I, there. Do you want me to show you? Okay. You want me to show you? Say yes. Okay. I'll show you. Look to the right. Everybody look to the left. Here we go. Here we go. There's a bridge of love that will take you over to the other side. There's a bridge of love 
that will take you over to the other side. This is the bridge of love, and this is the other side, and that's where we're going. There's a bridge of love that will take you over to the other side. Okay, so this is the geothermal lake. What do you think? What do you think? How warm will it be? I have a, I have a feeling that it won't be that warm, but it will be. Ooh. Ooh. It's pleasurable. It's not warm. It's definitely not hot. But it's kind of nice. Yeah. So I understand why all the birds are here. I won't go swimming. I got enough for. For now, I'm gonna head down to the Mewvatn area where I still have three, one, two, three, three hot springs to go through today. One of them is a cave, which, to my understanding, isn't really swimmable because it's too hot. Another one is also like just a hole in the ground, so it could be a, a quick visit. And then the third one is Mewvatn, which is like a smaller version of the Blue Lagoon and when I look at the water it doesn't look that appetizing because it probably comes from a geothermal power plant just like the Blue Lagoon if you didn't know that that's where the water comes from so stay out of the Blue Lagoon if you can just come to Husavik instead it's much better and it doesn't cost you that much only 300 or a thousand if you're like me <laughs> I want to pay more so I have a feeling that uh, Mewvatn will be the last stop for tonight, maybe, because it closes at, at midnight. So I'll go there maybe 10 o'clock and then I still have some mushroom chocolate. And if I feel like it, tonight's the night I'm going to eat it. And that's where I came from. And because you haven't seen enough of the sights yet, I'm going to show you just a little bit more. Oh, and a car. And my car. And another car. I didn't want to show you those, but ah, uh, they made it already. Let's do it again. Oh, another car. Okay, screw it. I'm sitting on a toilet in Mewbutton and I didn't want to film outside of the cafeteria and I didn't want to film outside because it was so windy and the cafeteria is so noisy and I also I don't want to talk shit about a place so other people can hear it while I'm talking. It's okay to put it on YouTube where you can watch it afterwards. But no, Mewbutton, no, it's like the Blue Lagoon. It's 4,700 kroners to get in. That's over 30 dollars. Over 30 euros, nearly 40. That's just crazy. And it's, it's, it's the water that comes from deep down. So it's very sulfury. Yeah, it's mineral rich. But no, not like that. I didn't like it at all. I'm not even gonna stay here. So my plan now is that I'm gonna go check out the other two hot pools. If they're okay, if I can get in there, I'll take a bath. But then I'm heading off to Akareli to stay the night. And there is one spot on the way that I heard a rumor about. I don't know how it is and where it is, but I'm gonna go hunt it. Yes, hot spring hunting, hot spring hunt. Sorry, I gotta, I gotta finish my business here, bye-bye. Okay, I'll give it that. They got pretty cool bathrooms. They're okay, and it's clean, and it's fun. It's good for tourists. It's easy to come to. Um, it's 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 nice, you know. It's good service. If you if you don't if you don't do any of the ones that I've done, this is a good place to come. I don't want to say anything bad. It's not for me. It's not for me. It's not for me. And I don't want to sound too picky or too kind of posh, but this surrounding is not that appealing to me. 
Um, I've seen the beautiful, beautiful, beautiful Iceland. So this environment that looks like the moon or Mars doesn't really appeal to me. Let's come back in, you know, 500,000 years and see how it looks then. It's not, it's not cool. I don't like it. It's too windy. It's too rainy. It's too cliffy. There's really no vegetation. It's just boring. It's Iceland. I love you, but this is not your best part.